Hello Hess Toy Truck fans, how are you doing? Today what we're going to do is we're going to go over my corrections to the official 50 years of Hess Toy Trucks by Hess Corporation. So first thing I want to say is, you know, Hess put out a great little book in 2014 for the 50th anniversary of the toy truck for the average person. Now, both this book and mine really do complement each other but do target different audiences. I'm glad I picked up a copy for myself and I'd recommend you do the same. Now, this is an update to the 40th anniversary edition, which obviously came out in 2004. However, with that said, there are quite a few things that were omitted or just plain wrong. And I wouldn't be doing my job as your consumer protector if I did not make you aware of such things. Uh, a little disclaimer, I highly doubt that Hess had any intention of doing this. However, let's begin. So it's a nice hardcover little book edition. The first thing you're going to notice is there's a lot of blanks pages, okay? A lot of blank pages. I'm going to get to that in the beginning. Starts off with a nice little dedication to uh, Leon Hess. And a really beautiful, a lot of new shots here, um, you know, just showing the decades. That was really a nice addition from the other one. Some really new, beautiful head-on shots and a little uh, intro to each decade, which is really cool. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is get right to uh, page 13. All these pictures are the same as the additional, uh, is, as the 40th edition. And on the, um, on page 13, 1968 slash 1969, it says... The 1967 truck returned with only one change, not mentioning that the battery cover now carries the Marks logo and says made in Hong Kong. Very important to know. Could be the difference between a few hundred or a few thousand dollars. Moving on, and they got the 70s. Moving on to page 16. 1970 slash 71. There is no mention of the, CD, of the season's greetings box from 1971. I just thought that was a little odd. Moving on to page 18. This is uh, where we start getting a little fun. This truck shown is not a 75. It's a 76. You can tell by the two-piece cab. Now, at least the uh, unlabeled uh, drums are correct. Okay? Now, page 19. 1976. It says, nearly identical, and the major difference is not on the truck, but the barrels themselves. Well, the differences also include the two-piece cab, uh, as well as a darker shade of green. Also, I thought it was interesting, the 1976 here is missing the driver's mirror. And that was the same from the 40th anniversary book. I don't understand why somebody didn't catch that. Okay, moving on. And here's a good one as well. On, um, on page 21, the 1978. Well, first of all, the truck is missing both of its mirrors. Again, why didn't they update that from the 40th anniversary? But it's okay. It's not a problem. But what I don't understand is, why didn't they just use the 77 and flip it the other way? The only reason, or the only way you can tell the difference is the rear logo. That's not a problem here. So why they just didn't take this truck and flip it this way? Again, I don't know, because you wouldn't have been able to tell. Now, a little fun fact, the, the reason the 78 was a repeat of the 77 was not that the training vans weren't ready. They were. There was a longshoreman strike on the eastern U.S., and they couldn't unload the vans on the docks here. And that's why, you know, they had the 78s done and shipped with the 77s just with a different rear logo as they were originally intended to be released in 1979. But since they were already here in 1978, they decided to release them in 78. And then in 1979, the gas crisis hit and they just held on to the training vans until 1980. And that's a quote from Anonymous number six in my book. And, um... That's why it would explain why, you know, 1978 is what's on the back of the training vans. It was released in 80 and all the glue running from sitting, you know, in a warehouse for two years or a dock. Anyway, moving on. Another nice little uh, shot here. 
Okay, page 24, the 1980. Uh, a couple things here. It says that it was the first commercial for the toy truck in 1980. No, sir, it was not. That was 1978, and you can easily find it just by Googling on YouTube. So 1978 was the first time they did a commercial for the uh, Hess toy truck. And if you're uh, curious, it was a guy in a tanker holding the Hess toy truck. All right, moving forward. Uh, on page 26 for the 1984, uh, you know, it. listen, further updates include using pad printing, not using stickers for the logos and lettering, and it also says that this was the last toy to use a single D battery. It is not. That, my friends, would be the 1988. But, moving on. On page 27, it's nice to know, now here's a good thing, they did correct this image from the 40th anniversary because now they show the 85 which has a coin slot whereas the previous edition I think they just used the 82 83 truck because why would you not show the coin slot that's the you know one main difference but they did correct it on this one so great all right moving forward you got all the other trucks now moving forward they're all the same pictures except Page 38, 1994, they completely redid this picture. Not sure why, there was nothing wrong with the other one. And then also on page 40, they redid this picture. Again, not sure why. Moving forward, on page 43, you have the 1999. Now this is a new picture, but all they did was just rearrange it and take the satellite from back here and move it to the front. Uh, okay, not sure why. Now, it was really cool that this book finally added the minis, okay, because that was absent for the 40th anniversary book. And on page 49, again, same thing as with the 99. They just changed the picture around. Uh, the only difference is that now the vehicles are on their respective ramps. Again, not the most popular models, so I'm not sure why they're bothering with these pictures. And then from... Page 53, 2005 on, are of course all brand new pictures that weren't, you know, around at the time of the uh, 40th uh, anniversary, okay? And then when you go to the end, the 2000s, another really nice beautiful shot there. All the trucks, again, beautiful shots, beautiful, beautiful shot of the collector's edition. And then here's a nice new additional shot where we've got the rear or the tail ends of the trucks. Very nice with a little uh, something from John. And then again, some wasted space, of course, some credits and acknowledgements. Again, space, more space, more space, more space. So it's a nice book, but there were some corrections to it. There was actually a lot of corrections to it. Now, let me wrap this up by saying, so it is of my educated opinion that this book had its budget cut, deadline shortened, and got butchered along the way. I was told that every single truck was newly photographed over a two-day period, yet it seems random the truck pictures that were actually updated. It just doesn't make sense. It's almost as if they intended to redo every single picture of the book, but mid-game was told, wrap this up by tomorrow, leaving it unfinished, if you will. I also heard this book was supposed to include a lot more information. You know, Hess, if you should have left a message, I would have called you back. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.